This is the Horse Radio Network. Hi, I'm Jennifer Wood. And I'm Jennifer Connor from Equestrian Businesswomen. And you are listening to Equestrian B2B, the podcast that brings together industry leaders, entrepreneurs, and equestrians for conversations about how they build and sustain a successful business. On today's show, we are talking to Taddy Singer and Ruth Sorrell, both of whom have made career changes. We talked to them about how they prepared, what their plan B was, how they made the leap, and how they had the confidence to change what they do. Taddy Singer graduated from Mount Holyoke College in 2008 and was captain of the Hunt Seat Equestrian team her senior year. Upon graduation, she went to New York City and worked for a marketing agency in shopper marketing for Unilever, working with brands such as SlimFast and Ragu. After a few years in the city trying to ride on the side and missing horses, Toddy began working in sponsorship for the Breeders' Cup World Championships and learning about the world of racing. Wanting to be back in the day-to-day management of horses, she returned to her family's hunter-jumper farm just south of Boston, and as well as being caretaker to her younger sister with autism. It was then that she became passionate about working with those with intellectual disabilities in the equestrian space, as Watershed Farm was a work site for adults and kids with autism and other neurodivergent disabilities. Once the cold winters of Massachusetts became too much, Toddy went back to the event side of horse shows working for the Split Rock Jumping Tour, and most recently the United States Equestrian Federation in sponsorship. With the COVID-induced layoff, the opportunity to join the media side of the equestrian world arose, and she is currently at Horse & Country, the leading international sports network for the passionate and active equestrian community. Toddy is eager to grow equestrian sport and the love of horses with as many folks as possible. Originally from Louisiana, Ruth Sorrell grew up in South Carolina, playing many sports, but focused on reining and volleyball. She has an extensive background with college riding, having coached for a total of 16 years. She was a member of the University of South Carolina IHSA equestrian team for three years and served as captain her senior year. Ruth coached at Fresno State University, Auburn University, and landed at her alma mater for 14 years and helped the program at South Carolina evolve into the first class NCEA Division I team it is today. During her time at South Carolina, she coached the Western team to help win three back-to-back SEC champion titles in 2012, 2013, and 2014, and two national championships in 2007 and 2015. After leaving South Carolina, Ruth launched Sorrel Equestrian Consulting, where she helps young riders prepare for life as a collegiate equestrian. She prides herself in developing and nurturing positive relationships. She has also been a client manager for Aflac for two years. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us today to talk about how you guys have navigated changes in your careers. It was a topic that I kind of thought of a couple of weeks ago, and we're so excited to have you here. Thanks for having us. Toddy and I have known each other for at least 10 years, I think, and been, yeah, hanging out and going to horse shows and lots of different uh, (laughs) ways. And um, Ruth went to a University of South Carolina with Connor and I. And wrote on the equestrian team. So we've been making fun of each other for over 20 years. <laughs> a long time. Uh, yeah, long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to start out, maybe, Tati, you can talk to us about kind of the inspiration behind when you changed your career. And, you know, how did you know that you needed to make a change? Um, yeah, great question. I mean, basically, I think we probably met around that time when I decided I needed to get out of the the corporate side of things. I was living in New York after college and working for a marketing agency and was lucky enough to be at Unilever. And I worked on brands like Bass and Ragu, but realized I was, you know, putting all of my efforts into pasta sauce and diet bars and needed to <laughs> want to do something else and trying to ride on the side, but it just wasn't doing it. And I've uh, always loved the sport and I've always been trying to grow it and 
always been kind of passionate about the sponsorship side of things. So it was like, okay, how do I, how do I, you know, get into doing something on the, you know, in the horse world um, and something that I actually enjoy. So just kind of started networking my way around. And, um, you know, I think that's probably when we met Jen and found myself Mm -hmm. racing and also on the horse show side of things and, and kind of here we are plus 10 years later. (laughs) So (laughs) It's kind of when I got, I got out of the out of the corporate side, found myself onto the the horse the horse show side of things, managed a farm, and did all that, and then was like, oh, I think I need to do more of the career side. So, and then found my way back on into the media side where I am now. And when you first made that change um, from corporate to horse world, was it like I need a change right now, or was it gradual? It took you a while. What kind of um, timing was it? Yeah, it took, it probably took me, I found with all of my kind of career jumps or changes in, in life changes, I should say, is probably, it probably takes at least a year, if not more, for, to actually rip the bandaid um, from the beginning because I'm starting to think about it. And then, you know, realizing, okay, this really needs to happen. So it probably took me a year to start thinking, okay, what do I want to do next? How is it going to happen? Where am I going to go? You know, so I would say around a year. Um, sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it takes maybe a little less, but it's, it was probably about a year for me to really, you know, rip the bandaid and and go on to other things. So, yeah. And Ruth, how about you? You know, did it, were you thinking about it for a little while before you decided you wanted to change things up? Sure. I mean, you have to have some sort of a plan, um, down the road and, and, you know, you want to make sure you're good at it and you enjoy it. And so it, it took a bit, I mean, I'm in, and coaching and you guys know I'm all in. So having 40 girls are like my own tra- children. So, you know, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough decision to leave, but knowing that I could still be involved was, was important to me. Yeah. And you went from, you know, being uh, an NCAA equestrian coach for your entire career, basically out of college. Yeah, and, absolutely. you know, that's such a big change for someone who that's all you've done since you got out of school. Did it also affect life goals? Like, were there other things that you were like, oh, I have made this realization on, and in, on something else too? And, you know, there's times it's still there's times where I still want to be a head coach and and that will come or it won't come. I don't know the answer, but for now we're staying the course and, um, and, and there's things that had to change and there's things that altered, but at the end of the day, I had to do what was right for me and my family, you know, as far as just something that needed to inspire me a little more or, 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 you know, continue the drive, you know, it was a big change, but it was all right. (laughs) (laughs) Talking about change, and I know it's like really hard to make the change. Ruth, did you have any kind of fears that you had when you were making the change? Absolutely. Going back to what Jen said, that's all I knew. And, you know, and how do you figure out what you're going to be good at if that's all you've done? You know, I know I can talk to anybody. I know I can, I know I can sell at the University of South Carolina, but what else can I do and be successful and, and sustain the, my lifestyle? right? Still be in the horse business, still be in the horse world, you know, still doing the things I want to do without going so far back. Cause I'm so far, I mean, you know, I was in my forties. So an entry level job really wasn't an option, if you will, you know, that I couldn't <laughs> say, well, let's go from making a to B and say, everything's going to be okay because I have a family, you know? And, and at that time the fear was real. So that's why I think for me, the decision took longer and longer because I had to gain confidence in myself to do it and to make sure I was in the right spot. Would yeah. you say confidence is one of the the biggest fears you had to overcome with yeah. lack of confidence? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Because you get it. You when you coach, you have kids help you. They either build you up or they take you down. Right? You have two <laughs> options. So um, you know, I had I, I was fortunate with wonderful kids throughout my career. And Taddy, how about you? What kind of fears did you have moving from a corporate world back into the horse world? Yeah, for sure. I would say probably um, the confidence is, I would second that for sure. And really just like feel a fear of failure, really. Like, is it going to work? And, you know, what, what, you know, is this going to happen? And, you know, you can say I went from corporate world back into the horse world, but I kind of had 
two kind of changes in careers. I went from the corporate world and the horse world and, you know, managed a farm and did the horses. And I wasn't exactly professional, but, you know, I, I managed the horse farm and I had clients and made, you know, made sure that we had borders and did all of the horse side. And then I jumped from that back into kind of the career side on the marketing sponsorship, media side of, of the horse business. So it kind of, it was almost two shifts. And, mm-hmm. you know, with that, it was like, you know, when I shifted the second time, I was like, do I stay in the horse industry or do I go on a nonprofit route? There were two sides and you just really, you know, the biggest fear is which one is going to stick and is it going to work? You know, that's the thing. Is it going to sustain the lifestyle that you want to sustain? And I still question it, you know, however many years down the line, you you still question it. So, but sometimes you just got to go, you just got to jump in with two feet. Yeah, I know. I went from more of a corporate job to managing a farm. And I knew probably six months in that it was not what I wanted to do. And then I was fortunate in another six months to find something else. So like, as soon as I knew, but I was in a really bad spot. And it was really, it's really hard to like think about what you're going to do next, especially when you're in the horse world and you're like, okay, what's, you know, what do I really want to do? Because I thought moving from corporate back to horses was what I wanted. But then I was like, oh no, I I do not want this. I do not want to be waking up at three o'clock in the morning to fold out mares. I mean, like the third mare I fold out, the foal died. And then I was, I cried for three days and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I mean, I have to, but I can't. Like something else has to come along. So yeah, I, I definitely get that like, going back. And then, you know, now I work in a very corporate world in sales, but it's with what I love. So I think that transition made it super easy because I'm still talking the talk that I did before. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Yeah. I think the fear is really hard. Fear of the unknown is so hard to overcome and trying to set yourself up as best you can before you make that leap. You know, I mean, I haven't really changed careers that much, but you know, I went from working from a company to starting my own company and didn't know what was going to happen and didn't know if I would get clients or anything like that. And I remember, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I remember talking to Mark, my husband, and being like, well, I know how to bartend. Like, <laughs> I can bartend somewhere, you know, in order to pay bills in the meantime and until I get clients. And I mean, it, it took off as soon as I started my own business and I was really lucky, but, and I worked hard, but, um, do you think Ruth in your current position, like, is this plan A or plan B when you decided you needed a change? Um, you know, did you look for several options? Well, you know, family, I feel, I feel like I've been in the insurance business my whole life just because of my dad with the Aflac deal. So, you know, going that route was kind of, felt like that's what I was supposed to do. Um, Is it a huge learning curve? Absolutely. And so, you know, I'm still learning every day, but that's life, right? So the new things that come my way, um, corporate is, I'm 100% remote now. So corporate world has been nicer to me. But as you guys know, I'm a little bit of a people person. So um, going, going total radio silence is hard for me, but I, I, I get out a good bit. So that's good. Um, But it is. So that's why starting my consulting business has helped me stay in the horse world and continue to do the thing that I, I left behind what I left behind. And then I got to take what I wanted with me. So, and so I do that on, on the side, which is great. And, and it, so to say, I don't, I don't really know if it, the consulting was plan A. Um, yeah. having consistent money was plan B. So, um, <laughs> so to say, I, I think I checked both those boxes off so far. So, um, I have lots of wonderful company to work for. So, you know, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. And do you think having more options like that is better or does it make it harder to decide which direction to go in? I mean, you've been able to kind of blend the two, but yeah, it makes it a, was there a point. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, like, how do you split your time or decide, you know, how much to put into each? Well, luckily coaching was a 24 seven job. So when I tell people I have a few jobs, they kind of go old. But when, again, and I hate for, for keep referring back to the 40 kids, but it's the truth. I mean, you are constantly on and um, you don't have time. I mean, yeah, you go on vacation, you might be somewhere in a different location, but you still have your phone, you still have the things and they depend on you. 
So having, you know, my consulting clients is pretty simple. I don't hear from them every day, just every other day, you know? So, <laughs> it, it, so, and I get to decide, you know, they, I get, I schedule. So, and the kids are usually home later, so I can do it when, and when I'm done with my AFLAC day and on the weekends, not a big deal. So, yeah. Yeah. So I That's, can balance it pretty I, well so far. Right. And, um, Toddy was your, what you're doing now kind of back onto the more of the marketing media side in the horse world. Like, what do you think was your plan A or plan B? <laughs> Good question. As I like to these questions, I say, I don't think I really had a plan A or plan B. I think this was really, really more of a plan D. I think it was more so just, you know, it's through like when I, especially even in like the last year or two with COVID and everything, I think my current role is definitely like, I don't know, plan D, plan, plan E that I just didn't even really have. You know, I was, thanks to COVID, I was at USCF prior to this. Yes, in the marketing sponsorship role, but got laid off. And then I was like, well, now what do I do? You know, and even at that point, I was, uh, you know, I thought about getting out of the horses and going into a completely different career wise. So, you know, I would say on the media side of things, this is probably plan D. E, F or something, you know, because I never really saw myself on this side of things. But at the end of the day, you kind of look back and you see how everything that you have done, especially in this industry, all ties in. You know, mm-hmm. even my corporate side and what I did at the agency world, that all ties in, you know, 10 years later. Um, you know, and then even the horse side, even like those little, you know, three month internships that you don't think are really going to go anywhere, that all ties in. You know, you just the world is is very small. The horse world is even tiny, but you know, I, I find the connections, you just never know where, gonna, where is, it's going to go. So, you know, I mean, I guess you always try to have a plan, but you never, it never falls into place where you think it's going to go. <laughs> right. <laughs> Toddy, did you have like a, a transition strategy or, you know, did you come up with some kind of plan when you were looking to change and exit? Like, was there a step-by-step that you took or you just kind of threw it against the wall and it stuck? I mostly threw it against the wall and it stuck. I would say when I, when I left the agency and got out of the corporate row back to the horses, I was like, oh, I'm done. I'm just leaving. At that point, I was like, I got the horses. I'll see where life will take me. And I got into the horse, horse side of things, but then that kind of broke me in for, I think, a little bit longer than I had necessarily planned. And I thought other things were going to come. And then I was like, okay, now at this point, I need to plan. So then at that point, I started planning and was like, okay, what direction do I want to go? Um, you know, sponsorship, marketing, whichever, and found myself on the sponsorship side of things. But then when all of that went to, you know, thanks to COVID and got laid off, then I just threw a lot of spaghetti at the wall, a ton of it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not, and that's how I ended up with agency. But you kind of, you just got to keep, keep leaping, keep putting one foot in front of you and see what pops up. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Get, go down some rabbit holes and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to have a plan, like Ruth said, but it, it doesn't always go according <laughs> to plan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a, any kind of specific strategy, Ruth, no. when you thought about leaving? No, 100% no. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. I, I mean, a hundred percent agree. It's kind of like when you get to that point, you're done and it's like, I'm out, you know, and you just, you, you just walk away and you look behind you like, Ugh, uh-oh. you know, cause there's things that you're, you're like, oh, well, I maybe should have thought about that, but yeah, no, not much of a plan. And I'm, I'm thankful that the consulting took off so quickly because I wasn't sure, but there's a huge need for it. And, um, so, um, grabbing the Affleck job was, was icing on the cake for sure. So there was no real plan, just leap in faith, I guess. Do yeah. you, do you think that like, cause I hear all of us kind of say we got to the point where we were absolutely done and just looking for the next thing. Do you think there's anything any of us could do that would, that would help us in the process to not get to the point where you're so done that you're just like, I'm going and whatever happens, happens. A hundred percent. I mean, I've looked back a lot and been like, oh man, if I'd have just been a little more mature at some point, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. uh, and, and just, you know, there's, there's a lot of things because do I miss coaching one a hundred percent. And um, so there's things that I look just that self-reflect a, cause we've had a lot of time and with this COVID by ourselves. So it's been, it's been a good thing for me personally, because I just kind of go. So um but yeah, there's some things I could have tweaked and probably handled a little bit better. But. Yeah, I feel like that too. I'm like, oh man, I should have reeled myself in, but I just don't know how to do that, right? <laughs> right, right. When you're Grab up on the reins. That emotion yeah. comes in, man. 
Yeah. yeah hindsight's yeah. 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I do think it's a maturity thing as well, though. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, if you're in your 20s and you're <laughs> emotional about something and you know it's not your passion, that's a little different than, um, oh. you know, being a little more mature about it. Yeah. yeah. When I left my finance job, I like wrote a note and left the key and never came back. <laughs> 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 that's amazing yeah. that's awesome that's like you want to burn a bridge here you go yeah. <laughs> it's, like it's, so right? it, it's since been mended but yeah like uh that was quite a <laughs> over, over a holiday weekend too like, I was, <laughs> it was like fourth of july weekend for the win on that one yeah, yeah. But that's I, pretty good but, but i will say to the burning bridges part i i was mature enough, at least when I left, that I didn't. I put some reinforcements under some bridges just to be like Ty was saying, you never know what's going to come your way and how it's going to come. So you just make sure you are always smiling and kind. Agreed. Yeah. 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 That's something yeah. I tell like every intern that I work with, every employee, like especially in the horse industry. Oh, like, man. You, you cannot burn bridges. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody's worked with everybody. Like no matter what the discipline, there's always connections and people are going to be following up and asking about you. So Absolutely. you, uh, and you, you know, like you think, Oh, I'll never see that person again. You will, Tomorrow. you will probably work with them. <laughs> they will be making some sort of decision that affects you. So, right. Um, uh, yeah. Well, my brother, it's hard work- though. It is. My brother still worked at the company when I did that. And I was like, never call me again. And, and they owned horses with race horses with my parents too. And they're like, hey guys, like, what happened to Jen? And they're like, we're staying out of it. <laughs> you know? She didn't like working there. <laughs> and now, now I have to like, I, well, I, one of their, their farm is my, one of my clients. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's awesome. So you have to come see them yeah. anyway. Yes. There you go. There's a prime yeah. example of why yeah. I say that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. If you are 20 and you are wa- listening into this, like, please do not burn your bridges. Please. You never yeah. know who you're going to have to face again. Put yourself in timeout. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. Take a breath. Mm-hmm. Take a minute. Reevaluate. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, then make a decision. Yeah. Unless you're in a truly terrible situation. Okay. Which I was in a couple of those as well. And I still tried to. <laughs> still didn't? Oh, wow. Uh, no, I, I still tried to be, you know, yeah. somewhat mature about it. Mature? Yeah. Yeah. No maturity here. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think funny. now, yes, but. Right. <laughs> Toddy, what were some of the steps that you took to to move from the career from your previous career into something new and start on a new path? Like, is there anything specific that you can think of that you did to take, to make those moves? I mean, it's, that's kind of a good transition based off of what we were just talking about. Really just like network, network, network some more and just keep throwing spaghetti at the wall. I mean, you never know. I mean, honestly, I ended up in the racing world. Uh, I really ended up in sponsorship period because I was just talking about doing sports marketing with somebody I worked with at the agency in New York completely non-horse people. And she said, Oh, I interviewed once for this, you know, sponsorship position with Breeders' Cup World Championship. She knew nothing about horses, knew absolutely nothing how the racing world and the show show world kind of talk, kind of don't. And she's like, here's, you know, here's this guy's email, send him a cold email. Don't mention my name. It didn't go very well. (laughs) And I did. And send him a cold email that night because I was just like, so ready, but just not sure what I wanted to do. 10 minutes later, he wrote me back. Didn't really hear much for three months. Three months later, I got an email from the head of sponsorship at Breeders' Cup. And I've, I've worked with them now for almost 10 years. Jen knows I've met so many people from there that has worked for Jen. And, you know, that <laughs> kind of really got me into the sponsorship side of things. And, you know, and I now, still now combine both worlds. And you just you just never know who you're going to meet, you know, and now they're my good friends and they got into the the racing world and met their husband because you just, you just never know. So I think they're not necessarily steps other than just send the email. You think you don't have time, just send the email, <laughs> just, you know, and almost don't think so hard about it. You know, I know yeah. one thing for me, at least transitioning out of, you know, the horses and managing the farm, I was almost so worried about those relationships 
and so, so concerned about that, that it probably took a little longer than I needed to. And you, you, sometimes you just got to rip the bandaid and do it. Like, yes, you have to take a deep breath and don't be too rushed about it. But I know you, you, sometimes you just got to do it, you know, and Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the people who, you know, care about you and know, you know, what you, that you're trying to do the best for yourself, they'll, they'll still be there, you know, no matter what. So it's kind of goes both ways, but yeah, it's happening on terms of steps. And did, yeah. did you have racing experience before you applied for that? No, no. So no, you just I had did actually, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had never really been to a horse race. My first horse race was Breeders' Cup, uh, 2011 at Louisville. Um, and I worked on sponsorship team and, you know, worked with, uh, you know, Grey Goose and all their sponsors and kept kind of, I was part of their event team and sponsorship team for, for many years. And, you know, and then when I got laid off last year, they brought me back on and worked at, at Keeneland as well. So you just never know, but I, you know, and that was interesting because I had the horse background, but a lot of their corporate team didn't. Mm-hmm. So that was a good experience as well on the business side of things that you can be involved in the horse world, but not have horse experience where I was mm-hmm. the opposite. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Ruth, how about you? Were there any specific steps that you took? I know you said you kind of built up to have a good base when you left, so you didn't burn your bridges, but. Yeah, just just reaching out to parents. You know, there's so many parents that do so many different things over 16 years of coaching. So you have so many connections and so many, so many people that helped me trying to say, okay, let's make a list about this type of career. You know, just trying to figure out what in the world may or may not happen after they got over the fact that I was leaving. So my former, <laughs> my former kids' parents were a little bit more helpful than the, the present ones now, but they were great. <laughs> they were all very supportive, but it's just, again, just, re- just knowing, knowing your resources and, and being, and using them appropriately and, and being very thankful you have them. I think that's one of the best things you can do. I mean, just reaching out to everyone, you know, and saying, this is what I'm thinking. Like, who do you know that can help me along the way? And, Yep. And I have people email me all the time being like, I'm looking for something or I'm good at this. Like, do you know anyone who's looking? And so many times that's just how it happens. And you make connections and find the right person by just being willing to reach out and tell people what you're looking for. I mean, I, I find two things. First of all, with equestrian business women, that's kind of the idea behind it and how it got started was wanting to mm-hmm. network with a bunch of women and, you know, get to know different people and help each other. And then also even on this podcast, we've had guests on in the past that I've been like, you know what, I know they probably know the next person that we want to have on. So I'm just going to reach out to them and ask them to help me, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it's worked out. It, I mean, it's been nice. I, I've never had anybody be like, no, I'm not helping you. You know, they're, you know, <laughs> they're like, yep, <laughs> sure. Here's a number, you know, here's an email, whatever. So it's, it's kind of nice to, to network. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I think just one thing that I come across a lot of times kids or, you know, people call me and they're like, but I, you know, or I share job descriptions and they're like, well, this isn't what I want to do. I'm like, well, do you know what you want to do? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, you got to ask, you know, or they don't really know what they want to do. And they're just so worried because they don't have the experience. Hmm. And I think we're not all going to have all the experience that every single job description has. You just have to ask and have the conversation. And I mm-hmm. think that's what, I mean, that's what landed me here. Just thinking about it. And I think I left the corporate world and that's when I met you when I was like, I think I'll do some sponsorship and, you know, mm-hmm. did an internship, but I don't know, the old fidelity classic. And that's when we can, you just never, never know. And even if the role is a little bit lower than what you want, you still just have to have to jump in because you got to get in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I don't think, really think there's such a thing as a perfect job, you know, okay. nothing's ever perfect. So, you know, just trying and, and learning from it is what you can do. I mean, I think one of our early guests, Holly, she said so many women don't apply because they think they're underqualified and men do because they just, even if they're underqualified, they're like, ah, well, I could do it. It's fine. So yeah, I think I think it's important that women do put themselves out there. I have a friend recently who was applying for a job at my company and she's like, I think I'm qualified. I'm like, you're more than qualified, like send it in. You know, mm-hmm. like there's a lot of people that are applying for this position, but you know what? Like put it in there because you're not going to get it if you don't. You don't have a chance of getting it if you don't. 
put yourself out there. You got to yeah. try. Yeah. 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 And maybe you're not meant for that job, but maybe there's right. another job in there that that isn't posted or you don't know yet. I mean, that's honestly totally. not my way. I mean, Absolutely. into USF, I applied to a ton of jobs there. You know, right. You found, finally found your way. You know, it takes time. You just got to, you know, put your foot in the door. Yeah. I mean, I get, like I said, emails and resumes all the time. And I'm like, ooh, you don't have exactly what. I need right now, or I don't have any positions open, but I pass on a lot of resumes to others that are looking. So, you know, just because I got a good feeling or you did a really good interview with me or something like that. And, you know, just like you said, trying and making the connections and um, it may not be your first choice, but your second choice could work out better for you. Well, and and sometimes you have to look for the opportunity in your job, right? To move up or to do something to to make your job what you want it to be. I mean, when I first started at Blue Chip, I was mucking stalls and grooming yearlings and prepping them for sales. And I I was like, mm, this is not exactly ideal, but you know, we'll see. And in the long run, I ended up being the bloodstock manager because I could be in the office and I could be on the farm and I could, you know, I knew all the medications and it's actually what led me to this job is that I did the pharmacy and all of the medications and knew every, all that and knew all the reps that helped me get the job that I have now. So like sometimes you just have to keep your eye open in the job that you're in, even if it's not the most ideal to see what opportunities you can take. But I went, put myself out there and said, you know what, I can do that and I can do that and I can do that. And when the time came for, for me to get a review and I said, listen, I've been doing all of this. What, extra can I do to get paid more, you know, and, and snowball it from there. Yep. Ruth, have you had any setbacks that make you rethink your decision? Not really. There's, you know, some things when you wake up in the morning and you open four emails and you have no idea how to answer any of them and you say, oh, okay, well, it's a good day. So <laughs> you, you take, you know, it's learning. I mean, you just have to continue to push yourself to be better, no matter what the case is. And um, just like we were just touching on, you know, you have opportunities that you have to take them. You have to be aggressive um, or proactive or whatever word you like better. Um, <laughs> so it's just a matter of, you know, trusting yourself and trusting your ability to get things done. You know, hard work goes so far. Good work ethic, you know, you can't beat it. And if you have somebody that bows for you word of mouth wise or, you know, through you or whoever, it's 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 unbelievable and it'll go miles. Yeah. I think that makes up for lack of experience or any other, not any other, but some other shortcomings, Right, right. (laughs) you know, I'll take somebody who really wants to try and learn and work hard over mm -hmm. someone who fits the job description perfectly, but doesn't want to put in the hours. Right. And then you're going to, so you're just going to get half the work, from the person, you know, you'll get double the work from somebody that work hard. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's always, like you said, there's no perfect job. There's always going to be setbacks. And, and, and if you could put on paper or, or create your own perfect job, there's still going to be setbacks. Right. So yeah. that's just how we approach them. But yeah, there's always setbacks. And Toddy, um, you know, are, have there been times where you're like, Ooh, I need to rethink this or, uh, that wasn't the decision I think I should have made. <laughs> I mean, all the time, you know, I mean, it, it happens all the time, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I would say, you know, thanks to COVID. I mean, that, that layoff from USCF, I, that was unexpected, you know, completely. And then I'm like, Oh, do I really want to be in this? Do I really want to be working in the industry that I love? And that I also kind of do as my, as my passion and my grounding, you know, I love the horses and I'm like, Ooh, do I still really want to be doing this? And I certainly questioned it at that point. And I mean, I, put out feelers and applied to a lot of non-horse jobs at the time. And, you know, and then options all kind of popped up and the right thing kind of showed up. And I never thought I'd be on the media side of business, but at the end of the day, I see like everything comes together. I'm like, I'm, you know, we're all here because we're trying to grow the sport of these animals that we love. We all got in here because of the horses at some point. So, you know, and then I realize it all comes together, but I mean, every day there are setbacks, you know, <laughs> and the emails say no, or the advertisers are every, <laughs> every day, but you just kind of look at it and you go, okay, you know, I can figure this out. And mm-hmm. yeah, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and, you know, just, yeah, keep trying. Like you said, Ruth. Yeah. And Toddy, 
did you have anybody that gave you support in your changes or do you had did you receive any like great advice when you were trying to make a change that gave you the confidence to do it? Um, you know, I think just really having like a good group of friends and a good group of women around you, really, you know, people who you consider, you know, I wouldn't say I have mentors per se, but women who I think I, I do look up to in their career paths and, you know, just in a good group of friends, especially in our industry that you can lean to and that you can also kind of throw ideas at the wall too, you know, and my core group of friends that will I'll call and say, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but just hear me out loud. (laughs) And I'll say, (laughs) okay. And then you just never know where where that's going to lead to. So, you know, I would say just that and just really know your worth. That's one thing, having that that core group of friends and women. You know, I wrote on the intercollegiate team in college back, back in the day, but just, you know, that really having that group of women and doing that in, in college, you know, really kept you just know your worth and keep asking like you said, Connor, the guys are always going to ask and the women don't usually. So just keep asking (laughs) and keep going. And Ruth, how about with you? Who was your support or gave you the confidence to definitely make your change? Yeah, hundred percent agree. It's, it's the people around you, the people that know you the best and are going to be honest with you because they'll tell you, maybe not, maybe we should try this and then move over here. Or maybe we should get established or maybe we should get a job with benefits. You know, I mean, there's so many things that, that are out there. Cause you're just like, they, when you like, like I've done for so long, when you're stepping away from that, you don't realize all that you have and all that you don't have. So, you know, it really takes people that know you deep down and will help you. And, you know, that core group that, that would just be like, absolutely you, you're going to nail it or hmm, maybe let's let's go this route first you know so i agree you can't you can't beat them yeah. i did not listen to my husband he did not have good advice he wanted me to stay at the farm because he didn't want to move and he liked it so we disregarded <laughs> what he had to say yeah. and there's times that happens right there's, so, so you gotta say yeah no goodbye yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, my, my family was behind me and gave yeah. me a lot of support to make the change. They knew how miserable I was and how it wasn't working out and how it was like really hurting me to right. stay. And, you know, he was just more like I he could see it. But at the same time, he was also like, oh, but it's a great opportunity. Well, sometimes it's not worth the opportunity that you have. Right. Right. Yeah. I think you have to. I think there's times and I'll speak for myself um, that we, we I do things because it's easy. Right. So you want to take that path because it's comfortable. It's easy. I might not be happy. I might not be healthy inside, but I'm going to take this path because it's easier. So there comes a time where you have to break it and you have to, you have to stand up for yourself. You know, I'm sure it wasn't fun standing up, telling your husband, absolutely not relieving, you know, but, (laughs) but you have to, you have to do it for yourself. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Ultimately listening to that voice inside of you and knowing that people have your back as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't remember what the quote is, but there's some quote I've seen recently that it's like, you can never really get there if you're always comfortable. So it's being uncomfortable to get comfortable Mm -hmm. or whatever that, that quote is, you know, it's just really getting out of your comfort zone. And, you know, it's always scary to pick up the phone and call somebody. It's always scary to make that cold, you know, and it's always scary to say no to somebody who you, you know, you trust and support, but you just got to try. And what's the worst thing they'll say? No. Then you go to plan X. (laughs) (laughs) There's always going to be more down there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Plan A, 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 B, A, C. Yep. Exactly. Gone through the alphabet already. Right. right. (laughs) I like the hurricane names, right? We just keep going. Yeah. Well, um, I really love talking with you guys and, you know, hearing about your journeys and your advice for others in this situation. And usually at the end, uh, we do the same rapid fire questions for every guest. And Connor usually starts out with the first one. Yeah. So we'll start with Ruth. So what is one action that women can take to make a big difference in their lives? Continue to believe in themselves. And to always put themselves, put themselves first to a degree, right? I mean, with families and different things, that's a different story. But to put themselves first, take care of themselves and, and believe in themselves because you can, we can accomplish anything. Yep. Well, it's kind of like put the, the mask on yourself right before you do it on an <laughs> yeah. airplane. So yeah, my favorite thing to do, fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Hadi, how about you? What's uh, one action that women can take to make a big difference in their lives? 
Um, kind of what we were just saying, or just stand up for yourself and surround yourself with strong willed people and just don't be afraid to ask for what you want. You just got to rip the band aid and do it. Yeah. And Tati, what is the best habit that keeps you motivated personally? I would say just, you know, really like trying to write out like monthly yearly goals. That's something I didn't necessarily do for a while. And I think I kind of got stuck in a rut a little bit. And once I started mm-hmm. writing things out that, you know, the whole thing that they say manifest what you want to come, it, it does work. <laughs> you know, there's kind of, if you put everything to paper, at least for myself, then I remember it and it'll come and, um, you know, and just keep not working. Like we said, you, you never know who you're going to know, especially in this. Sport. Yeah. So, and do any of you do that? Like writing down goals and stuff? I don't do that. I do. And I just, I don't know if I should start that habit. I I do that. And I also have a gratitude journal that I write in every single day of things mm-hmm. that I'm grateful for. Yeah, I've yeah. heard of those things. I don't know. I've been doing it for years ago. The same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that sounds like a fabulous thing for you to do. <laughs> Let me spend seventy-five dollars on something that I don't open. Maybe. But no, I agree. I agree. I, I think those things are wonderful, and I do try to speak them in my head a good bit. But yeah, my mom has one of those, so maybe I should borrow hers. I have one free. It's on my phone. I do it on my phone when I wake up, oh, and cool. then I yell at myself for being on my phone when I wake up, and I try right. to throw my phone away. And I try not to go to social media first sure, thing sure. in the morning, or my work email. So blown up. That's good. <laughs> well, Ruth, why don't we uh, support each other in writing down our goals for okay. the year? All right. By when today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to do something every day. We'll, uh, okay. we'll start yeah, small. No. I do. I do agree with goals. So I, I'm, I'm on that. I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. Okay. But smart, smart goals. That's what you have to do. Sustainable or something measurable, achievable. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Mm. I was yeah. like, well, yeah. I Timely. I don't know. What's that thing? <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to spell them right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, so, Ruth, what is the best habit that keeps you motivated personally? I think trying the organization piece for me is is huge. Just to make sure having two things going on, knowing where I'm supposed to, you know, what's happening at that time, and and staying up with these kids because they come to me for help to go to college. So, if I miss something. Uh, then they'll, they'll be delayed. And that's that's where we are in, in college recruiting for equestrian. Being late isn't really an option. COVID's helped us out a little bit with that. But um, I just have to make sure I'm on top of both both jobs at the moment. So, Is there anything specific you use for organization, like um, any tools? Um, I have... I have my work calendar on my computer for work, and then I have everything else on my phone or... Um, I have a actual hard copy calendar because I do like to write things down just because it makes me look at them. Cool. All right. So last question, Ruth, what's your favorite horse movie? Secretariat all day long. (laughs) Really? Hmm. Yeah. Woman owned. What more do you want? Right. (laughs) True. (laughs) I mean, she was a boss back then and no one did it. Right. I mean, (laughs) come on. You didn't think about that till now. (laughs) I actually didn't. Not, not that no, not that it was woman owned or that she was a boss. Yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And Toddy, how about you? You know, when I when I saw this question, I I had to, I'm like, oh, which ones that I always like as a kid? And the Horse Whisperer. I don't know, maybe because mm-hmm. it was one of the first ones that like came out when I was younger, and it was like kind of resonated. Um, but you know, and then I always think of Life in the Doghouse as well, although it's not really really horsey but i maybe it's mm-hmm. because i watched it on 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 a delta flight <laughs> 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 that's a good one there but i'm with you on secretariat that's always a good one but yeah, yeah. First, 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 first back in the day yeah cool thank you guys so much that was awesome. with us. it was good really good you had a good time thank you yeah Absolutely. love talking to you guys and i'm so glad we got to have you on and and um for people who listen to our podcast to be able to kind of meet our friends too. You know, we don't always know the people that come on as guests, but this was really cool to have two friends on and, um, and be able to share your knowledge and experience with them as well. Yeah. 
Well, it was fun. It. Thank you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Thanks for yeah. having us. I was so happy today to get to talk to Ruth, who I haven't talked to in quite a while, and to meet Toddy and just talk about career changes because I know I've had quite a few of them. And, you know, it was good to to cover that topic for a lot of people. I think that, Mm -hmm. you know, making changes is hard. We've talked about that before, but, you know, career changes, it's pretty big. Yeah. And I think it's still a really relevant topic with the pandemic still going. Like, you know, you see so many articles and pieces about how everyone's leaving the workplace or changing their job or doing something different because the pandemic made them realize that they didn't like doing what they were doing. So I think it's really interesting to, um, you know, see how these two have adjusted their careers and the paths that it's taken them on, um, you know, and, and how happy and fulfilled they are, even though it's, you know, it was a big leap for them. Yeah. And, and keeping them in horses, right? I mean, I think we see that theme a lot is like how to do something that'll keep you in the horses and, and do something that interests you and you love, but still have some kind of connection to the horse world. Right. I and think both of them yeah, done that. They both did know? that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I could see where we, like Ruth is, Ruth's change um, was a little bit more difficult as far as going from being a coach and doing something for as long as she did into mm-hmm. what she's doing now with the, especially with the insurance and the Affleck job, you know, the consulting mm-hmm. I think is right in, in the same lane, but you know, insurance yeah. is a different animal. For sure. <laughs> and like she said, you know, she was on 24 seven with all of those kids relying on her and consulting with her all the time and, and, you know, being like their mom in college yeah. and taking care of them. And I'm sure that was a big change for her, but um, I think, you know, she's found a nice middle ground with a consulting company where she can be her own boss and she can, to the most part, set her own hours and, yeah. <laughs> you know, have a life too. Yeah. I, and I think that's becoming more and more uh, important to people and a little more prevalent, like f- with working from home with the pandemic mm-hmm. is people are realizing they kind of like to to have their own schedule, set their own schedule and, and get things done that they normally couldn't get done before well, when they can, you know, and do the work when they, when they can do the work too. So, mm-hmm. and like I said, it was just really fun to have friends on and yeah. and be able to talk to them about their experience and and know more about how they felt about it and I mean I know Ruth and I were texting all the time when she was starting her consulting company and um you know I was helping a little bit uh with that you know on the marketing side and mm-hmm. um yeah it's really cool to be able to bring them on and talk to them about it and share their stories yeah. And, and Toddy, I found it interesting that she went for a job that while she has horse experience, she didn't have racing experience and she just kind of went for it. And I, that's like inspirational to me that, you know, to hear somebody that did that. That's why I asked her if she had racing experience, because mm. it's to me, it's odd being in the racing world when people who aren't racing show an interest and kind of dive into it. I, I do think that sometimes it's easier when people have the equine experience going into the, a job, even though it's a marketing job, she has the equine experience. That's not stuff that you can easily teach people, right? Like the equine right. stuff is kind of ingrained in us. The marketing stuff you can kind of teach people how to do. Sponsorships, so that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I see it on my my sales team at work. You know, we're all, most of us have really in-depth equine experience. It makes us better salespeople. Right. So we can talk the talk. I I can't hire anyone who doesn't have horse experience. Like if you're at a horse show and you're writing about it, you have to know what's going on and you have to know the sport. And, you know, but I will say, like you were saying, like, if you don't have racing racing experience, but you have hunter jumper or dressage Mm -hmm. or something, that's that's okay. Like, I think you can go into dressage and 
you know, be able to learn about it and, and write about it. But I don't think you can come from not knowing anything about horses and <laughs> right and writing right. about show jumping or something. Yeah. We can't be in like dog showing and be like, yes, <laughs> <You know? laughs> the same thing. You know, I mean, listen at the racetrack, when you're looking for grooms, you just want people with horse experience. We can teach you how to put a harness on, but you need right. to know how to lead a horse. You need to, how to act, know how to act around a horse. You need to mm-hmm. know what signs of horses in distress or, you know, yeah. um, the, and those things, they come from being around it and doing it not for a long time. And, and it's hard to let people gain that experience while they're in your barn looking after hundred thousand dollar racehorses. So totally. <laughs> so, so, so anybody from, you know, hunter jumper, Western, whatever, you know, a horse, good. We can teach you the rest, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then there are opportunities for, getting that entry level experience with horses. Yeah. Just just not at, you know, a a very top facility that's going to races every single day. Yeah. Or I mean, even horse shows, I'm pretty sure some of those Mm -hmm. top guys, you know, they're you're not throwing somebody with no experience into FEI. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) They're they're back at home. Yeah. You know, working with the horses that stay at home and, and learning along the way. Yeah. But, you know, and also I just want to reiterate the the opportunity thing because I don't think I would come as far as I have if I wasn't looking for opportunities in the job that I had, you know, like to, to further myself and find something different. And, and, you know, I mean, all of it has led to where I, I need to go. And I think that Toddy said that too, you know, like you look back and you're like, oh yeah, all my experiences did come together. And they are kind of putting me in the place where I need to be. You don't necessarily mm-hmm. see it on the road, but I look back and I think the same thing. Absolutely. Well, that was really fun. And yeah. uh, I look forward to the next one. Yeah. And happy awesome. new year. Happy new year. Yay. Will you, do you have your goals written down for 2022? Um, I've started them. Not really. I've mostly started on my fitness goals. <laughs> <laughs> Like with my uh, CrossFit, like I need to be able to do one real pull up and I want to be able to do 10 good push ups. And so wow. I started with that. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. Yeah. I have not set any goals. So maybe I'll set my first goal is to start thinking about goals. How's that? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. And then we can, we can uh, reconvene in a few episodes and uh, see where we are with those. Yeah. Well, because I like to split it out into like certain parts of my life, right? So I'm going to have goals for the podcast, goals for my work, goals Mm -hmm. for um, my fitness and my riding goals and, you know, try and keep them brief. So there's only one or two in each category, but I like the category. Okay. Hmm. All right. Maybe I'll try that too. (laughs) Thanks for inspiring me, Connor. Yeah, no problem. (laughs) (laughs) Find the links to today's guest's and the show notes at www.eqbusinesswomen.com. Equestrian B2B is out twice a month on the 1st and the 15th. You can find out more at eqbusinesswomen.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Find Equestrian B2B wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to follow, subscribe, and leave a review. You can have all 20 plus shows of the Horse Radio Network with you wherever you go with their free app for iPhone and Android. Go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. Now, go prepare for a change. 